I'm back <laughs> for the second time this week. I'm Annie, Joyfield Stitcher. I was just here on Monday with my whip parade. And today I am back with floss tube number three weekly update. And so today is Friday, May the 31st, 2019. And it is crazy to believe that May is going to be over. Like, where'd it go? It flew by. And it always does that. Um, I've mentioned previously I am a teacher. And I always, like, am blown away by how fast when we come back from Christmas break, even. Just the whole spring semester just blows by. I'm not really liking my lighting right now. Oh, that's better. <laughs> that's better. Okay, so, anyway... I am going to be sharing some things with you. I'm going to move one more time. There we go. I still have a glare, kind of, a shadow. Anyway, still figuring this all out. So today I'm going to be sharing what I stitched on. Um, new this week will be what I am reading, a little life update, um, plans, and then haul. Things I added to my stash this week. So let's start with a little bit of life update. So when I last spoke to you, it was Monday. It was Memorial Day. It was a day off from school. Then Tuesday, um, I was back on campus. Um, if we had finished our checklist on Friday, we did not have to come on Tuesday. I chose to come go in on Tuesday because um, I chose to go in on Tuesday because I am moving classrooms. So I needed to pack up my room and finish that all out before the summer was kind of upon me. And so with the assistance of my mom, and thankfully um, I teach at a private school, and because I'm a staff member, Tuesday was not a day where there was any kind of arrangements for kids unless you are a staff member. And so we have what they call staff kids days. So my daughter was busy playing with her friends and going on the playground. I think they were on the playground for like, 45 minutes and then they went and visited the farm. We have a farm on our campus, which is way cool. We have chickens and we have bunnies and they have planter boxes and stuff. And so that's really cool. And, um, so they did all of that. And my mom and I, I had planned to be there for the morning to pack. And then we were going to have to leave because my daughter started swim lessons this past week. And then I was plan going to plan on having to be back after lunch to finish packing. Well, we, my mom and I, I guess we've moved enough between the two of us in our lifetime. We busted it all out. I was ready. We were ready to go when it was time to go to swim. So, yay. That's done. That's kind of behind me. Now, I will be back up there in a couple of weeks, I believe, because my new room is still under construction. And I'm hopeful to be moved in before July. Um, cause July we go on vacation and do some other fun stuff. And so I'm hopeful of that. I think I've rambled enough about that. So swim lessons this week. Um, and just, I've gotten in a bunch more, it feels like a bunch more stitching this week. I think I've had homework finished by like Tuesday night. Um, so I've done some extra credit stitching. I've been working on kidding some projects. I have been inventorying patterns. I'm gathering my things to kind of do a little bit of a de-stash on um, one of the Facebook groups. And so, yeah, I've been a little bit busy with some other stitchy related things. Um, so let's kind of start with one thing that's kind of nice now that I'm out of school um, for the summer is I'm able to spend some more time reading. Um, when I was in school, I had the ability kind of during my planning period, if, if there was not a meeting or something, my job has frequent meetings um or on my lunch or you know in the last 15 minutes of the day I would turn on an audiobook but for some reason I could never wrap my head around like actually sitting and reading a physical book and I enjoy reading a physical book so I have checked out from our, our local library this is the second in this series um and it's by the same author who writes the goddess girls book but this is thunder girls and it's based on Norse Norse mythology. It's by Joan Holub and Suzanne Williams. And this is, like I said, the second one. It's by the author of The Goddess Girls. This is Thunder Girls. And this is Sif and the Dwarf's Treasures. I read the first one, which is Freya, 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 and the Magic Jewel, and read it in a day. Um, and loved it. I love it. Now, this is very much like a middle grades. 
Um, I have it in a pouch that I created. It's got um, like feathers on the outside and then some cute fabric on the inside. Um, but yeah, I've been enjoying that book. Um, it's not picked up quite as quick as the other one because they're told, each one is told from the series, from the perspective or from the storyline of that one that it's about. Um, but there's four of them. Um, so there's Freya, Sif, there's one that comes out in October, which I plan to make sure that's on my, like, kind of hold list from the library. That's Idun, Idun, and she's all about apples. Um, she provides kind of the apples that give them energy, and they make the apple juice out of. And then there's one other one. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. So anyway, that's reading. Now, I thought since this is the last day of May, I would update you on kind of where my mania has ended up. I did participate in my very first Stitch Mania. And I chose to do something a little bit different. Um, I've talked about it previously. I did Strawberry May Nia. And so, little backstory. Um, my family loves strawberries. When I was sitting down thinking, you know, a month or so ago, well, no, older, before a month ago, um, was sitting down thinking about what do I want to do for Mania? I was like, Monogamania, maybe, but there's not really a project I want to like that's one large enough or that I don't have slotted for other things for magical stitches or whatever. And I was like, well, I cannot bring myself to do, you know, 19 new starts or however many new starts, you know, so or that many new starts. So I thought, OK, let me come up with a theme because, you know, creativity is key. And so I came up with May is National Strawberry Month. Um, my husband is from um, a city where strawberries are a big part of their culture. They have a whole huge strawberry festival. And so I thought, you know what, let me just look and see what's out there in the way of strawberry patterns because we love strawberries and we're basically at this point going to have a whole like wall dedicated to all the strawberry stitching. So we'll start with the first week I did, um, this is Blackbird Designs. I'm thinking if I have a picture on my iPad or not. Um, this is Blackbird Designs, Strawberry Fields Forever. And this is part of the series that they did that is, um, I do not have a picture of this on my iPad. Um, this is part of a series they did that was kind of like a Beatles tribute. And so um, I'm stitching this in all, hmm, I don't want to say all the call forts, but a lot of the call forts, fours, excuse me. Um, Blackbird Designs uses a lot of um, over dyed. And so this is where I've gotten to. So I have the house. And it's going to be in, I think it's, I think it's Gentle Arts Ladybug. And this is on a 14 count silk weaver. I think it's an almond. I think that's the color. I'm not sure. It's kind of a sandy tan. And I have this, I showed, I showed all my project bags um, in my whip parade, but if you don't want to sit through an hour and 10 minute video and you're just watching this one, I will share. This is in a Love You More Studio Co pouch. This is a Tula Pink fabric. Super cute. Love these. And this is my preferred style of pouch now. Let me share my other progresses, progresses, progress, the progress on the rest of my manias, um, strawberry manias. So my next one was by Lila Studio and it's Dinah's Garden Strawberry or Strawberries. So this is where, this is what this one will look like when it is finished. This is on a 14 count silk weaver Ada in Ray of, of Sunlight or Ray of Light. And so I have stitched the center kind of motif, missing the actual strawberries. So as you're going to notice throughout these, there's no strawberries stitched on this one. There was no strawberries stitched on the last one. I'm set up to sit, stitch a lot of strawberries on them, but I'm just not there yet. But that's okay. These are now great whips to be able to factor into some of the other tasks and things that, that I do. Okay, so then my next week... I went to Strawberry House and I actually was able to fit this into homework last week. So I got a little bit more in brown thread. But I have the entire house. This is, um, I didn't show you the picture. This is Little House Needleworks Strawberry House. And that is unfortunately not focusing fantastically. There we go. And as you can see, you're kind of getting a bigger shot of my messiness over here. But it's okay. Um... So I have the house stitched and I believe this house and the house on Strawberry Fields Forever are the same 
same tonal. They kind of are like, um, I think they're ladybug is the, the called for floss. Um, anyway, this is on 14 count, 14 count. I think it's sorbet. It's like a pink. It's a mottled pink and it's really soft. So like some Ada I found that I purchased from, um, I purchased this for one, two, three stitch. I think it was a nine by 12 piece. So a real small one. I think it was on sale one week and it happened to be on my wish list. And I was like, well, I'll go ahead and purchase it. I don't know for what. And it just happened to be the perfect size for this project. Oh, I just showed you my back. My backs are not great. Um, but I'm kind of okay with that. I'm like, you know, I don't, I'm not going to be framing things. I don't believe where my back is going to show. And so I'm not, I'm really okay with it. And I know some people are like, no, your back looks terrible. My back looks so much better than it used to. So whether it looked terrible or not, it looks better. Okay. So the next project was actually for homework and this is where it starts to overlap with homework. Um, so let me, let me kind of switch gears a little bit because I used two of my Strawberry Mania pieces for homework this week. So this week, if you are not familiar with everybody who's, not everybody, I don't want to say everybody, but all the people on FlossTube that are speaking about the School of Magical Stitches and Literature, um, I've been a member of the group since February 15th and it has greatly increased the amount of stitches stitching I've been doing. And I really seem to like, to me, I gravitate towards the stitching towards a task. I like that. Not everybody does. If that's not your jam, then I totally get that, but I like it. So, um, this week for homework was all about SPEW, S P E W, which is the society for the protection and something, something of the elves. Basically it's trying to give the elves a better quality of life. And Hermione creates SPEW, S P E W. So we had to stitch 200 stitches in a project that fits the letters S, P, E, and W. And it could be the design's name, the first letter of the design name, you could disregard A, N, or the, or the designer's first or last name, or the designing company's name. So for S, I used, now I have to think about which one I used for what. Yes, that's right. For S, I used um, Strawberries and Stripes, which is by um, Brenda Gerv Gervais. And um, this is what it will look like. Um, it's finished like almost as like a little pin keep or something with like this crepe paper and stuff. I'm going to do this just as like a small, like maybe a key fob, like a, not a key fob. Oh my gosh, key fob. Uh, scissor fob um, as part of a swap. And so I have shown this one to you previously. Um, I can't remember if I had finished this when I showed it on my last video, but I am stitching this on a Mystic Fabrics, which is on Facebook, and it's an 18 count Ada, and it's in this really pretty blue-gray, and I have stitched almost all of this kind of olive -y green color that makes up the vines. The bird is in here and the flag is up here and then there's strawberries over here on this side. So this is kind of the strawberry vine that wraps around. Um, so I have a deadline for this, which is, I believe, June 20th. So I've got to kind of get on this. And I, I tentatively was like, this is such a small stitch. It's not gonna take me that long. It didn't take me that long until I had to frog it, not once, but twice. And I was like, oh, the frog was, it came and visited me. The frog was visiting me yesterday and today. So whatever this frog business is, the frog needs to go. I, I can't deal with this frog nonsense. Mm -mm. So that was a strawberry mania and I used it for homework. So for P, and this one actually was a, I use this for extra credit as well. For P, this is um, snowflakes and buttons, which obviously that's not the letter P. But this is by a company on Etsy that I have linked previously. I think if you want to see, I think it's in my floss tube number two description. This is what it will look like finished. So you can see it's got these snowflakes and button shapes. And actually I realized in stitching it that some of the centers of the snowflakes look like buttonholes also. Um, and this is by a company called Punochka, which is P-O-N-P-U-N-O. C-H-K-A, I believe, and they're on Etsy. Um, again, they're linked in my number two video 
Um, and I might have time to link in this one. This is on a 18 count Ada that I dyed using Rit. It started as an antique white and I used navy and aquamarine to make this one. And so this includes not only uh, my homework stitches, but this also includes 506 for extra credit. So I am loving this stitch. I mean, this is, it. unfortunately my camera does not zoom in very well, does not focus well as a zoom in, um, but I'm loving it. Um, and I kind of, I kind of was excited when I posted it to um, my Instagram and the designer commented and said it was looking lovely. And I know that that's so silly and I don't stitch for anybody to say like my stuff is awesome or anything, but it's kind of nice to hear every now and again. Um, that things are going well. And this one I'm using two flosses. So I'm using, um, this is Ice Blue, which is approximately a DMC 3753. This is a Victorian motto. And then I have, this was a um, Little Orphan kind of turquoisey color. It reminds me a lot of Ship's Manor. It is Ship's Manor, but it reminds me of their Calypso, which is a real bright turquoise that's also in... Um, I think two other projects that I'm doing of theirs. So this was P. We've got S, P. E was Emerald City Sal, um, which is by Al Forest Embroidery. I am still working my way through release two. This is release one and release two. I'm still working through release two. Release three has come out, which is the Tin Man and the Cowardly Lion. And then this Sunday, I'm excited to see what is in release four. Um, so if you have not hopped on, this is a free, free, free um, Sal stitch along. I think it has 12 parts. So it's going to be fantastic when it's finished. It did kind of cause me a little bit of pause when I started it. And I don't think I've shared this yet. But I'm used to starting in the center. The center center. But this started in the bottom, the bottom, the bottom right, which is fine, except that I wanted to make sure, and I feel like, mm, I might have cut my fabric, my fabric might be like on the verge of mm, whatever. So I found my center, and then I actually counted down. I actually did count down, and I don't have a huge border at the bottom. I think I maybe ended up with about an inch and a half. But anyway, so this is across the whole page what I have completed um so let me show you more and more closely what I stitched on so this was my 200 stitches and this is the good witch of the north which I believe is based off of the book not the movie because the one in the movie she's in like pink sparkly but in this she's in white and I think oh correct me if I'm wrong I say that a lot, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I think this is, her name is Tinky Poo. That doesn't even sound right. That sounds kind of funny, but anyway. So I don't know when this will come back out. I feel certain it'll come back out sooner rather than later. Um, so yeah, that'll be exciting to see again and work on again. Um, and this is, I forgot to show my bags, but this is in a Made by Mama Joan bag. Uh, Kelly Creates um, collab, black and white gingham. It's one of my, it's really one of only two or three vinyl front bags. This is one of my other ones. This is my one that holds all my strawberry pieces and it has strawberries on the back. And this is a Be Crafty bags that I sent her the fabric. She's out of uh, the UK. And then the uh, strawberries and stripes is in a snuggly, a flannelly, fuzzily sleeve that I created um, out of some flannel from Joann's. And then Snowflakes and Buttons is in this kind of woodland creature one. Now, I will say, on my agenda this weekend, oh, I'll get to plants in a minute because I have some cool stuff to share. Oh, I have one more strawberry piece. I started this one Wednesday. This was W. Um, so this was the last one for homework, and this was W. I am sorry, I am so scattered today. I'm like, bing, bong, bing, bong, bong, all over the place. Um, I see, I'm gonna show it to you, but now I'm not seeing it. Eyes, why are you not showing me the piece? Okay, well this is Little House, Little House Needleworks. 
and it is strawberries. And this I am stitching on this precious kind of uh, mm, light brownish with cream or white dots. And this is 20 count Ada. I love it. I love this. I thought 80, eight, 80 count, 80 count. I thought 18 count was like my thing, but I like this 20 count. It took a little getting used to, especially since the dots are printed on. And so they kind of, you kind of have to like finagle your finagle, I like that word. But so this is the thing that makes me so happy about this project. Anybody notice what the very first thing I stitched was? <gasps> a strawberry. So I actually have one <laughs> strawberry out of a whole month I stitched one. One strawberry. But it's such a cute little strawberry. It isn't currently completely finished. It does have the little kind of eyes of the stra the eyes, the seeds of the strawberry. There's a few of those to put in, but you can kind of get the gist. Um, now you may be thinking, Annie, how does Little House Needlework Strawberries fit in with the, the task of homework? Well, here's the thing. I asked because on this pattern, it's an older pattern, it says Little House Needleworks by Diane Williams. And so I asked in my um, common room, I'm a Ravenclaw, in the Ravenclaw common room, hey, do you think it would work for me to use this because it's Diane Williams and use the W from Williams. I said, if not, cool, I'll find something else. No big deal. I did not have another W project, so I was like, please let it work. I don't need another new start. I already have two more, at least over here in this basket. Um, and they were like, sure, that'll work. And I was like, yes. So this was my W. So that was homework. And it was accomplished in some kind of crazy record time. And then I've already shown you my, and I have a pile on the floor. I remember there was this video of Michelle, um, Michelle Garrett over at Mindy's Stitching. She's like, I'm on the struggle bus. I feel you, Michelle. I am on the struggle bus tonight. I am. I think it has maybe a little bit of something to do with the fact that I got a wretched night's sleep last night. Um, my husband yesterday out of nowhere. I mean, we suffer from seasonal allergies in our house between my daughter and she gets the sniffly in her ears. Mine is my nose sometimes and a little bit of a tickle cough. Right now I'm pretty good. I'm, you know, I take a daily allergy medicine. She does too. So does he. Well, he, his allergies decided to like attack him and become bronchitis. So all night last night he hacked and coughed and hacked and coughed. And it wasn't for lack of taking multiple different cough suppressant -y kind of things and Advil and whatever to get himself right with the world. And so finally about five o'clock in the morning, I was like, I love you, but I can't take this anymore. <laughs> and I went and slept the last, like, I slept, my alarm goes off at six. I know I'm weird. My summer alarm is the same as my year long alarm. I turned off my 515 alarm. I usually, during the school year, I have a 515 alarm, and that is my get up. I can have a cup of coffee, have my quiet time, do my devotional, and sometimes get stitching in before my 6 o'clock alarm, which is like, ooh, you got to get ready for work before you wake up your child at 645 to get to school on time. Um, and thankfully, I teach at the same school she goes to, so it just, it works out perfectly. But so my six o'clock alarm went off like I was laying on the couch and, was, and I was like, oh my gosh, turned it off, ended up sleeping till 730. And you know when you wake up and you've had a really bad night's sleep and you almost wake up feeling like you're hungover, like back in college, had too many beverages of the adult like nature and you feel gross and you feel rotten. That's how I woke up feeling. So thankfully after two cups of coffee, I started to feel better. And then we got our day going fine, whatever. But I'm going to tell you, it's 845 and I'm like, I'm reaching the end of my rope here. So, and now I'm rambling. I'm done rambling. Okay, so plans, plans. Tomorrow starts June 1st. We are still in year four, year four. We're in year four. Two plus two is four. We're in year four of School of Magical Stitches. So we are still, I am still working through some extra credit tasks um, this weekend for sure on the agenda is I have got to get my temperature quilt caught up. And I showed that in my whip parade and I will show it next week. Um, but I have all of May to stitch. So that's going to take me some time. But I needed, to, I wanted to wait. At this point I've waited long enough. So I'll just wait and get my temperature tomorrow for today. And I'll probably stitch that on Sunday. 
Um, so that's for sure on the agenda. And I'd like to go ahead and maybe start another extra credit task since I finished this one. I finished five of the 11. Um, 10 are 500 stitches a piece. Is that right? There may be one of those that's only 200 stitches. I can't remember. I think 10 of them are 500 stitches. And then there's one of them which is watch the Goblet of Fire movie and stitch something while you're watching it. I think last time I put in 13 stitches during the first room. That's going to be good. Okay, so I actually have for sure a new start tomorrow. And if you're on Instagram and you follow along with, you know, whatever, you might know that there's kind of a, like a, kind of a, uprising all of a sudden uprising that sounds negative like an excitement around um a kathy barrett pattern and doing a june stitch along and it's uh there it's called hashtag magical moth sal so you may already know what this is but it's the hl's moth by kathy barrett and this was another nashville release i purchased this at my lns on market day did not have any plans to like bring it out anytime soon, but I'm was very inspired by all the people posting. So I've picked a fabric. I'm going to use this Mystic Fabrics, and this is in Veteris or Veteris, and so it's kind of a uh, tan, not a tan, like a sandy color, but it's got some grays and greens. It's kind of murky looking. I love it. So it looks very vintage. So I'm going to use that, um, and it's a 16 count Zweigert. I've got way more than enough. And I don't have the DMC. I looked today, I don't have all the DMC. I for sure don't have MPI, because no. Um, so, but what I was thinking is I'm going to probably do a little bit of a just like, hey, let me look at the picture and let me find some things in my stash, because I've got enough, I've got enough over dyed flosses to be able to kit this with my own and it'll be close enough and actually I have something in my haul and when I looked at it I was like ooh, because I pulled it back out again tonight to like look at it and kind of go okay I'm going to talk about this what do I want to say about it I do a little pre a little pre-planning um one thing that I noticed was that a lot of those will work for this so I'm actually going to keep this kind of close by and I'm going to pause before my video cuts me off so I can not be like frozen. I'm back. So we were talking plans. And so the next plan that I would like to share, and I do not have the hard copy of this pattern right now in front of me, but I do have a picture. And this is a little bit of a take on, this is a prairie schooler, prairie schooler. And this is a Christmas tree farm. And so I am doing a little bit of a spin on this. Um, I need my color to come back, but I'm actually going to show you something on another device here real quick. I you will know if you've watched any of my videos or seen anything on my Instagram feed that I am obsessed with pretty much everything Ship's Manor. Um, his design style, his color theory, his flosses, his fabrics, patterns, the whole gamut. And so probably like a number of months ago, he posted where he had done, and I'm going to see if this will focus. He had done, let me zoom in. Oh, it's not going to work. Here we go. He had done tree farm, but as like an orphan. So he used all of his extras of his hand dyed. So if you can tell, like Santa is in like magenta, like he's cool. He's rad. And then these houses are all fun, bright colors. And some of them are even like variegated. So my goal is I'm going to stitch this in a similar style. I'm not, obviously he gave no conversion. It's just use whatever you have, but I'm going to change mine up. He did his on something close to that veteris. I'm going to use this. This is another Mystic. You're seeing a pattern here. This is an 18 count Mystic and it's in this pretty bluish gray. It's either this, I'm not hundred percent sold on this. It's either this or this. <laughs> I'm like debating or the um, black and gray that I did that I showed in my last video that I dyed. So I'm still on the fence about that, but tomorrow one of the things on my agenda is not only to pull the conversion for the moth and get that at least a stitch put in so I can say, I started today, um, but also to get um, flosses pulled for this. And so I've got some grab bag ones I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use some from my um, nest egg, some from 
color and cotton like I kind of have an idea and what I did was I created a file on my computer and I went okay here are the coat here are the symbols that were used and here's what the general color is like it was DMC 680 I don't think that's one of them and what the overall what what it was used for and if it was something that it was used for so one of them was a gray but it was used for the road the tires and the roof well I listed all three of those separately and then I think the tires but then there was something else that like the outside of the sign because I may use three different colors for those the trees are in that are only done in two colors of green a light a medium and a dark my grandma I may pull all kinds of greens um, and do lots of different colors of greens for the trees and then the houses in that were all stitched in red blah I get hey okay that was rude of me I'm gonna take that back. I'm gonna take back the blah. It's not my aesthetic. Um, and I actually have Prairie Schoolers Village Sampler and I will be doing that one in a similar fashion. And it may be a little less frenetic. This one's gonna be like, oh, I like that house to be pink and I want this house to be purple. Um, and I'll just have lots of random colors to pull from. Um, so now that I've talked enough about that, that's in a bag of my making. This is a fabric that um, I used to have on a bulletin board in my classroom on my bulletin board and I changed up themes one year and so I kept it because I loved it and now it's a project bag. Awesome. All right so that's plans. So plans. Yeah. Temperature quilt, HL moth start, May definitely getting a uh, tree farm completely kitted and obviously moth conversion completed. I got project bags to make, um, a rather large number of project bags to make. And my mom found out about them and wants me to make her an iPad sleeve. So she gave me fabric. All Liberty of London's. Oh, it's beautiful. I love Liberty fabric. All right, so who wants some haul? Haul. Haul. So what do I do when I bring out my haul? But get my big yellow and white bucket. Um, I actually don't have... Well, I don't have too much shawl, but some stuff showed up today. I was like, yay. Okay, so this is kind of an order that I received it. And I think I actually had this last week and I just didn't show it. Um, so this is my um, Gulf Coast Stitches Floss Club Floss something. And she's changed up how she's doing it. Um, Julie over at Gulf Coast Stitches used to do it where she invoiced. And now she has it where you go on to her website and you... Kind of purchase your way in starting at the first of the month i believe and i like hers because she does kind of a combination of several companies so like i know that she pulls from gentle arts classic color works weeks ships manor and color and cotton and it's not guaranteed you're going to get some from every single one and i think you can do a five or a ten i did the ten and so these are the weeks that i got this was a weeks heavy month this was May's month. So I got, um, I'm going to try to do this, like the pros. And if you saw my address, just send me happy mail. I'm just kidding. That was rude. Um, I told you I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Seagull. So like a pretty gray. And I think this actually maybe could pull for a color in that, um, in the moth. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to start stacking things over on this table. And this is nonsense. This little thing isn't going to work. Um, so then I've got Rust. And I actually feel for certain this one actually looks really good. Actually, actually. Looks really good for the moth. I don't know that for a fact. This one's interesting. But I kind of like it. But I'm curious to see how it would stitch up. This is Mother's Day. And it is very variegated. It is like maroon purple, light pink, and medium pink all together. So I would be really curious. And it's Mother's Day. I really like that. That was a good choice, Chuli. Then you got monkey grass, which is a good kind of mildly variegated green. And then onyx, which is a black and charcoal combo. Anybody else have issues with weeks really like almost immediately nodding up? That's me. All right. So then I got... Actually, I think this one, now that I'm looking at it, could be really good for the moth. Um, some Ships Manor. Um, this was, again, part of my Gulf Coast stitches. And this is Herb Garden. Which is a pretty, like, 
early sprouts pretty like it's a really pretty good variegated it's got some light medium and um real like chartreusey almost and then this is foxy loxy and i really like this this is like a peach peach peaches and cream kind of peaches and taupe peaches and taupe and then i got three classic color works so we have everything this month was really good and variegated i like this sometimes you get colors from them not from not from Julie, but like you get colors from Gentle Arts and they are like solid. And at that point, it's kind of like if they're going to be that solid, I get that that there's a quality thing. But I feel like at that point, I might have could have saved money. But I really like them when they're variegated for that look. Not everything needs a variegated look. This is Old Oak Tree Classic Color Works. And then we have I love this one. Oh my gosh pickled beets pickled beets and it's like a true like an orchid and purple light purple like lavender and wild berries so this was an awesome 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 month um for my gulf coast stitches i don't know if i'm gonna do it this month i do like that she has now changed it up where you can kind of decide you don't have you're not like you don't get the invoice and so you can as long as they're in stock when it gets posted each month you can decide if you're going to participate or not. I kind of have a lot of floss right now. So it might be that I wait a little bit to um, purchase anymore. Speaking of floss. Um, Ship's Manor. I swear. It should be. I'm not sponsored. I'm not affiliated in any way with Ship's Manor. I know it sounds like I am, but I'm not. I promise. Um had some floss grab bags and I'm like grab bag yes and so I bought three ten skeins each so I have 30 30 30 that was really sure 30 so I have I kind of group I don't know what I'm gonna do with this because I've got just a mass I mean look at this this is gorgeous beautiful so just to kind of get show you some highlights there's some um, threads of the month these were January from some at some point these were one of the March ones. He does two threads of the month each month. So these were some from March. And then I got three of these. And what's funny is I actually already have these. So I'm going to have to find a project for these. But they're gorgeous. So, I mean, it won't, it won't be like I'm going to be sad to stitch with them. Actually, I'm sorry. I lied. I got four of those. Awesome. I need, like, to do that with, like, some kind of really cool ink circles or something. Okay, then I got an April which might have been la this last April. I did not, it was not fast enough to get it and it sold out like super fast. But it's like, it's awesome. It's pink, yellow, and orange all together. And then this was another. I think he does one that's more like a bright and more that's one like a prim. And so this I think was his April prim. And this is going in moth for sure. Like this is actually tonally it's almost like identical to one of the ones. So that's going in moth and I have two of them. Not that I need that much. This was a May, pretty light blue. This was an October thread of the month. Mind you, in October, I didn't even know about Ship's Manor. And now look what's happened. I've fallen like off of the ship. Um, this is November. This one's really pretty. It's like a blue and a straw color. Mulberry is a possibility. I think this is more of a prim color way. This is a possibility for going in moth. It's kind of pulling a little more purple now that I'm seeing it. Like kind of a creamy, neutrally, purpley brown. But it could still maybe work. This one I think is for sure going to go in the moth. This was a, this is just listed as a limited edition. But isn't that beautiful? I think that looks kind of like that brightish, pinkish, reddish, all the ishes. But I love that. And I got two of that one. Um, I got three of this gold. I'm thinking this could actually look cool in the moth, although it's more of a buttery, creamy yellow. I still like this. This is a little bit like the last brighter limited edition I just showed, but it's a little, it's a tiny bit lighter. It's a tiny, tiny little bit more muted. And this could actually be good too. I think this one might go in the moth. It's a little on the purpley side, but still really pretty. This is a unique one. And I actually, it's going to sound really bizarre, but I actually think I have an idea for this. It is a orange and light blue and a tiny bit of brown 
kind of all mixed together because I guess when you get when you put when you put the orange and the blue it kind of made brown um my husband is a huge Houston Astros fan and if you know Houston Astros they have the beautiful colors of orange which all their shirts are orange so he wants to always buy our daughter Houston Astros short shirts they're always orange and navy so I know it's not navy but I think I could come up with something cool to do for that so we'll see and then I got this kind of brown it's an olivey brown with some medium brown in it and I'm thinking this could be good for moth too I'm just calling it moth for moth so this was a score they did not come on the ring I just put them on the ring but look at how beautiful these all are I don't think he has any more but I would definitely if you like his stuff every now and again I go just check what he's got going on and when he posts his little orphan fabrics in the same tab is where he'll put his flosses and things so good deal all right next I posted this on my Instagram and this just came at me most like look at how fun this mailer is so Misty oh, let me have that over at Mystic Fabrics, who I, you know, purchase fabrics from like every month for flop, blah, 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 not floss of the month, fabric of the month, and does fabric games on Sundays. And so, and I clearly have quite a number of projects kitted with her fabrics, um, was one of the retailers that got to purchase this pattern. You may have seen this, but it's Needles Dance. And this is a collab by Summer House Stitchworks. Oh, I am totally showing the chart. You didn't see that. I'm sorry. That's just part of it. It's on the back. Like, this is actually on the back of the chart. Okay, anyway. Summer House Stitchworks Ink Circles and Hands-On Design. And it is such a pretty pattern. It has these gorgeous letters. And then up here, it's got the needles. They're, they look like they're dancing. And then these... I mean, this screams at me ink circles ink circles so they show you it with the blue or with a more neutral colorway I'm doing the blue obviously I mean I know I say obviously like y'all know me but here's the cutest thing so in this came the linen um and they sent you even a cute little needle sticking in a pom-pom so it doesn't stab you which I think that's such a cute idea and the um, flosses. And it's all classic color work. Sunset, deep fennel, um, rose petal, chai, hazelnut, and nature trail. And it even had this cute little card. And then here's all the pretty flosses. So I have the fabric, but I am not going to stitch it on the linen that was provided. It's a Wichelt. Wichelt? linen in that beautiful blue color. When Misty was talking about selling them, she's going to sell a kit or a pattern singly, singularly. And I chose to go ahead and buy the kit because when she talked about how the fabric itself was not a large part of the cost, it was more the floss and the pattern itself. To me, I want I would rather already have the flosses available to me. Um, I knew I wanted to stitch it in the called for flosses, not a DMC conversion. I didn't really want to convert myself, even though I have obviously enough flosses to be able to do that. Now, the the super cute part of this is Misty packaged the whole thing all sh super cutesy up in this adorable navy blue background fabric with birds. So I actually have enough of this because it's about a quarter of a yard to make a pouch for the outside of the pouch. What I realized though is I have enough fabric if all the birds are laying down. So I realized I was like mm, I'm still going to make it into a pouch because how cute is that to turn this into the project pouch for it. And I was like what do I have in my stash? Of course I have fabric in my stash. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. And I'm going to add enough of this cute pink flower at the top to basically make like a border, but make the pouch big enough to cut vertically this way. And then the inside is going to be wood, like a tree. So I thought that was really cute. And I thought that was really a super cute touch of her to kind of wrap it in the fabric. And then I'm like, well, I don't want to get rid of this fabric. What am I going to do with it? And I'm like, uh, duh, make a pouch. So that's on my list of pouches to make. And that'll be a start at some point. 
Um, she had spoken about maybe trying to recreate a blue to dye a blue that looks similar to that. It's kind of like a Delft blue. Um, I wish I had it by me, but it's in my D stash pile. Um, I kind of wish she would come up with one in an Ada, but it's such a saturated medium blue that I'm not sure that Ada will ever get to that deepness. So I may attempt to do something or I'm sure I have some kind of blue in my stash that would work. All right, so moving on. More haul and then I swear I'm gonna like hopefully get my haul like under control. All right, so I ordered back from Under the Sea Fabrics and I think some of these are still listed on her site. So if you like Under the Sea Fabrics and you like his price and you like um, fun, exciting fabrics go check these out um they took about a month to ship to me because she does them all as ordered even though this was more of like a grab bag it still was like wait three to four weeks and it i literally ordered them like april 24th and i got them yesterday or something like that so i ordered four of her stitchers eights so that's a roughly 13 by 17 inch piece i received so here's what i ordered and it's under the sea fabrics. I ordered a 16 count Stitcher's 8th Mystery, an 18 count Stitcher's 8th Mystery, an 18 count Opal, and a 14 count Opal. And somebody please tell me why they don't make 16 count in Opal. It's a bummer. So let me show you what I got because I'm really excited about them. I got, this is my 18 count Ada. And this is an Ice Princess and I think this is beautiful. Her things are beautiful. And I mean, they're just pressed to perfection too. All right, what am I gonna show next? This is my 14 count opal, and this is in Sea Witch. Shut the front door if that is not gorgeous. I mean, look how pretty that is. Deep purple and black, and then the little bit of, the, well, not the little bit, the lot of opaly sparkliness. Okay, then my 18 count, 18 count opal just wait for it wait for it evergreen oh, I gotta find something cool to stitch on for Christmas on this like even if I just do white on this the fabric is the star I mean and then you get a really cool pattern and then look at that sparkle oh I do this all day I won't because you didn't sign up for that all right and then Last but not least, this is my 16 count. And this is in the colorway Galene. Ah! You have a mermaid? Stitch it on here. Got a fairy? Stitch it on here. This just looks so magical to me. I'm actually going to open it up because I think that this one specifically shows her expertise in dyeing. I mean, just beautiful. Beautiful. And I'm like, hi, I'm still here. Anyway. Okay, so I got those. What a deal. What a deal. Did I mention each of those pieces, 13 by 17, was $7? $7. Amazing. Okay. Two more and I promise I'm done for today. For today. All right. So then, if I hadn't spent all my money with Misty already at Mystic Hand Dyes, she is awesome and will take, she does uh, pattern orders. So she um, has some different patterns she carries. But mostly, she'll say, hey, I'm planning an order from, insert name here, what do you want? And then she gives you a great deal on it. So, she was doing one for hands-on design and one for ink circles. So, I was like, what all do I need? How long is my wish list? What is this going to cost me? So, I got hands-on design. This is um, part of the white Christmas series. I turned it because these are postcard style, which means the pattern's on the back. And I'm only going to make that mistake hopefully once in a video and show. So this is Dear Tear. And I am a little bit of a like Ray Dunn gal. I love Ray Dunn stuff. And I have like a little tiered tray like this on my dining room. Well, not on my dining room table right now because my dining room table is set up in my as my sewing station. Um, So yeah, I love this one. And then the other one that I got, this is part of a collaborative series between um, kind of the same people that did Needle Dance, actually. Summer House Stitchworks, Ink Circles, and Hands-On Design. And so I got the Hands-On Design piece from this series, and it's Mid-Century Gardens. 
And so it's the number two. And as you can see, this is the Summer House Stitchworks. This is the Ink Circles. And now that I'm looking at it, I love these two also. So I might, this is not on the docket to start anytime soon. I might get these other two and stitch them like as a trio. I don't know. Thoughts? Anyway, I liked it. So I got that. And then my ink circles. My ink circles. I'm really excited about all these. I love everything that's in this style. It fits very much within the style of what I'm kind of, my vibe is right now and what I'm liking to stitch. So the first one I got, Ink Circles, is uh, Pick a Lily. And what's cool about this one, and if you um, look on the back, it says, for instructions on finishing this into a post-it note cover, as shown in the picture, visit the Ink Circle site. I have not gone to see if this is still available because this was a pattern for 20, 2010, but I feel certain it's still there. But I'm like, um, yes please, Functional cross stitch on my desk. Sign me up. So this is so cool. And I just, again, I love this. And this is actually stitched. The model is stitched in Dinky Dyes Lily Pilly. So the whole thing is Dinky Dyes Lily Pilly. And I love how it turns out, which is the one. I don't know that I'll do it in that because I'm not sure about Dinky Dyes. But I definitely have some variety that I could use. The other one that I got that's a small postcard one is Alto Gether now. And so this is part of a series that has the um, first base. Here comes treble, which I love that because um, anybody else an Office fan out there? Um, one of my least favorite characters is Andy Bernard. But the name of his, like Cornell, Cornell, I went to Cornell. Cornell band or acapella group was Here Comes Trouble. So the patterns are first base, Here Comes Trouble, and All Together Now. So I chose All Together Now. And my daughter is in a choir at church. And so I'm going to stitch that up for her choir instructor um, because she loves cross stitch herself. So I thought, huh, there we go. All right, so then I got two big charts. This one I got is Croakworth or Croaksworth. And I'm really excited about this one. I will definitely be stitching it in the more colorful floss. This is on a, this is all done in black um, or a black derivative. And so I will be doing this one. Again, this is not any time soon or anything like that. These are just ones I saw and I was like, well, if you're ordering, I'll, I'll get them. And then this one, oh, this is going to be, this is going to be an adventure. This is probably maybe for sure. I don't know, maybe. One of the largest ones I will ever complete when it's done. And this is the Quaker Floral Puzzle. And I love it. I mean, it is beautiful. Beautiful. And I just, I love it. And so, um, and I will stitch it on a charcoal -y type fabric. But it will be an Ada. No linen for me. Not anytime soon. Um, and I do love that they provide more than one colorway. I think that's really clever of them. Um, I am really jumping on the bandwagon, the fan wagon of ink circles. Um, so yeah, I got one more and Hey, some of these might be good for some of these, uh, patterns I just got. Um, so if you have not found hand dyed by Rwanda, I was enabled probably over a month, probably two months ago by Miss Jennifer, Jennifer Upton. But uh, with her hand dyed bow Rolanda, I think she was sharing some embroidery, embroidery floss that she had gotten from her. She does silk. She also does fabrics. I do have one fabric. I have an insane amount of her uh, flosses, the not the um, silks. I'm not a big fan of silks. And so I was watching one of Jennifer's videos. I was like, you know, I haven't looked at what she has right now. Let me go look. What do I need? I don't need anything. I think I've uh, illustrated that point rather accurately that I need nothing. But, you know, of course, I couldn't be left there. So I found some cool flosses. Now, I will say that two of these... Okay, so do you remember... Do you remember? Did you watch? Um, where I was talking about doing the Isaiah 4031 verse on the, the gingham week's dye work linen. And I was really starting to feel a little, like, apprehensive about stitching on not only just the linen, but it being gingham print 
and it being weeks, which I've heard is more floppy. So when I was back thinking about this and planning it out and getting it all kitted, 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 I saw these on her, um, I saw these available in her shop. And so they're two different. This is a darker like navy blue. This is like a royal blue, but they're variegated. And so I thought, okay, maybe my alternative might be, might be, if I stitch that on just a white or a, or something like that. I don't know. It's not like they're going to go to waste. Okay, so then I got two of these. I think it was the only two she had at the time. And they're a pretty purple with navy. Gorgeous. Again, another dyer who just has their colors on point. Pinks. I always am a sucker for anything, any of the pinks, the pretty petal pinks. Um, I loved this one. I think this is very vibrant. It reminds me a lot of some of my favorite DMCs that not everybody uses because they kind of border on neon, but it's like the 995, 996 or 3846. Love. And then I got this variegated colorway, which reminds me of like Easter eggs. So it's got like periwinkle blue, lavender, yellow pink and then where the colors meet they kind of blend so there's like a little bit of like a salmony orange almost done then i got this one and i actually feel like i might have bought a few of these already or something similar but i thought this could be great for a fall a fall look so i love that one and then this oh this one's beautiful pink magenta purple red i mean it just spans the spectrum these are beautiful. Um, so Rolanda, bravo. Um, very vibrant. I mean, very vibrant. And that's the thing. It's like you can tell she does put time and energy in making those look fantastic. So I think that's all I have for you today. Um, I'm going to try to be better now that I'm in summer um, of hopefully not making these extremely lengthy videos that I, where I chat to no end. Um, I also am going to try to be updating my Instagram more frequently. I know that's super crinkly. Why am I doing that right now? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I've got to do some cleanup. I think I filmed, this is now my fourth video to film. And stuff is everywhere. I've still not figured out how I want to do my overdyed flosses. So they're just literally in a big bucket. And these will join them. Um, which is making it very challenging to pull things for these projects because I'm literally having to pull everything out and lay it all on the floor. But anyway, so if you have any thoughts on that, that would be fantastic. So hopefully tomorrow I will wake up off the struggle bus, off the, off the struggle train, whatever, however long this journey is. Um, and I'm hoping that you all have a great, wonderful weekend, that you get some stitching time in. Maybe you're going to get to spend some time with family. Maybe you have to work. I don't know. My husband has to work tomorrow, so it's just my daughter and I. So I'm trying to think of something fun because goodness knows we've been out of school a week and she's already bored. And I'm like, you're bored? Well, why don't you clean something? Why don't you go play in the yard? Why don't you go do something? <laughs> I'm like, I'm not bored. I guess maybe it's time to teach her to cross stitch because I'm not ever bored because I cross stitch. Anyway, so I hope you have a great week of stitching. I wish you all the stitchy best and uh, a very blessed week ahead. And I will see you next week sooner rather than later. So have a good one. Bye.